Hi, and welcome to lesson 11.3 on generating random samples. So we're wondering, how can you generate and use random samples to represent a population? And we talked about populations in the previous lesson. So we're going to generate a random sample using technology. And in an earlier lesson, you generated random samples by rolling number cubes, or at least I did. And I, see, I told you about it. I didn't actually show you in the video. You can also generate random samples using technology. And in this explore activity, you will generate uh, samples using a graphing calculator and this is my not quite a graphing calculator but it'll do the same thing in the situation each of the 200 students in a school will have a chance to vote on one of two names tigers or bears for the school's athletic teams a group of students decides to select a random sample of 20 students and ask them for which name they intend to vote how can the group choose a random sample to represent the entire population of 200 students. So they don't want to ask every single student. They want to get a random sample of 20 and they're wondering how can they do that? Well, one way is to use a graphing calculator to generate the random samples uh, to simulate choosing 20 students at random among 20 students. This is what you do. So I'm going to get the random, this is rand int, random integer from 1 to 200. So I have this, I'll turn it on, and I was doing that before. So uh, I have to, for this one, I have to hit random, uh, well, I see random right there up above, so random, and I'm gonna choose number two, rand int. So I get that, and I have to now do uh, one, comma, and the comma's above that, and that's the second function, that's the second function right there. So I hit second function, comma, so that produces a comma there, and then 200. And then I close the parentheses, and it'll give me a random number from 1 to 200. And it gives me, wow, 200. Okay, that's kind of strange. Let's try it again. I think I can do, yeah, and it does it again. So I just hit enter, and it did it once again, 149. I could do it again, and I, the advantage of this is I can just get random numbers from 1 to 200 at a push of a button over and over again. Okay, so what I did is I, I did all this stuff here and you hit enter 20 times, so that's what I was doing prior. And the group gets a list of students in the school and assigns a number to each one. The group surveys the students with given numbers. Of the 20 students surveyed, nine chose tigers. The percent choosing tigers was 45%. And that's because we have nine out of the 20. And when you divide that, you get 0.45, which is 45%. What might the group infer? So giving this information here, what could they deduce after that? What could they figure out from this information? The group might infer that the name bears will probably win because tigers lost. That was under 50%. Or that both names are almost equally likely to win because 45% is pretty darn close to 50%. Okay, next. Part B. Now you can simulate multiple random samples to see how much statistical measures vary for different samples uh, of size 20. Now you can assume that the 200 students are evenly divided among those voting for tigers and those voting for bears. You can generate random numbers and let each number represent a vote. Let's let the numbers from 1 to 100 represent tigers, the numbers 101 to 200 represent votes for bears. Each simulated in for each simulated sample, use that same thing that I did uh, earlier in the calculator, rand int, random integer from 1 to 200, generate those, and uh, generate 20 numbers. Perform the sim simulation 10 times to so record how many numbers from 1 to 100 are generated, how many of the samples are indicated that there were nine or fewer votes for tigers. I did this. I did it here. Look at all this. All this right here. If I look here, this is, and I'll zoom in further here, this is uh, four by five. So four times five is 20. There's 20 numbers here. I circled all the numbers that were from one to 100. And there are 13 of them. In here, there were 11, eight, 12, 10. Uh, there are eight here, 15, eight, 11, and 10. So altogether, you would see that there are 200 because there's two, um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 
10. I did the simulation 10 times as the paper had asked me to do here. And so from here, how many had nine or fewer votes for tigers? Well, I counted here. There's uh, one here, there's uh, two here, and there's three. So three indicated nine or fewer votes for tigers. Next, combine your results with those of your classmates. Make a dot plot. Show now, I didn't have any classmates, but I made a dot plot. Eight happened three times. 10 happened twice, 11 happened twice, 12 happened once, 13 once, and 15 once. We can see here, for instance, 15 happened one time. Okay, I'm going to communicate some mathematical reasoning here. Let me zoom in and see if this will help slightly. Uh, assume that it was accurate to say that 200 students are evenly divided among those voting for tigers and those voting for bears. Based on the result, does it seem likely in a sample size of 20 that there would be nine or fewer votes for tigers? It would be unlikely based on my results. So nine or fewer right here, we can see that it only happened three times out of the total 10. So that seems unlikely that it would be nine or fewer votes. And here, but let's make a prediction off of this. Based on your answers, you think it's likely Tigers will win. Uh, based on my results, uh, I, I said will not win. Or, but when I look at this, based on this, it looks like Tigers will win because it happened one, two, three. Four. Actually, it might win 10 or more. Eh, you know what? It's it's up in the air, actually. I, I could say they, they will win. They might not. It, it's, a 50, it's straight up 50-50 at this point. I'll zoom out here to show you that. Yeah, it's like 50-50 because half of them voted for and half of them voted against. Suppose you wanted to simulate a random sample for the uh, situation in activity one. Without using technology, one way would be to use marbles for two different colors to represent choose students choosing the different names. Describe how you could perform the simulation. Well, here's an idea. You could... Yeah, I can't fit the whole thing in there. You could let white represent a vote for tigers and black represent a vote for bears. Place 100 white marbles and 100 black marbles in a bag. Draw without looking. Record the color and then replace that marble and repeat until you've done, uh, you've drawn 20 marbles. So there you go. That is what you could do. And we'll move on to explore example, uh, uh, explore activity two. In this situation, a tree farm has a 100 acre square field arranged in a 10 by 10 array. And here's our 10 by 10 array. 10 by 10 makes 100. The farmer wants to know the average number of trees per acre. Each cell represents an acre. So an acre here, an acre there, and so on. The number in each cell represents the number of trees in that acre. So this acre has 43 trees. This acre has 61 trees, and so on. Farmer decides to choose a random sample of 10 of the acres. So it's randomly choosing 10 of these. To simulate a random selection, the number, uh, number of the table of columns 1 through 10 from left to right. So 1 through 10. And then number of the rows, 1 through 10, top to bottom, 1 through 10. And uh, draw one at random, replace it, and uh, place the pieces into a bag. Draw one at random, and replace it, and draw another. So uh, on the paper, you have uh, 1 through 10. Put in, and, and so on. Draw them. And the first number represents the table's column, and the second one represents the row. For instance, draw 2 and 3 represents a, a cell in the second column and third row. So if you draw 2, draw 2, that goes to the second column. Draw 3. That gets you to 54. And that's what they're saying, 54 trees. Repeat this process nine more times. So you're going to have a total of 10. Now, I didn't do this. However, uh, I answered the next one here. Based on your sample, predict the average number of trees per acre. How does your answer compare to the actual mean of 48.4? So what they did is they they actually did the, the, the if you add up all these numbers and divide by 100, you would get 48.4. And I'm saying, your your sample your mean of that uh, of those ten numbers may not be close to the actual mean because the sample is small. If your sample gets larger and larger, instead of ten, maybe it's twenty or thirty or fifty or so, it will get closer and closer to the actual mean of forty eight point four. 
compare your answer to part B with several of your classmates. Well, I didn't do that. Do they vary a lot? I think it might vary quite a bit. It's likely, is it likely you can make a valid prediction about the average number of trees per acre? And explain. Well, I know the answers are gonna vary quite a bit. They, they likely will. We will discuss this in class, okay? And you can make a valid, but the statement here, my explanation is you can make a valid prediction as long as the sample size is large enough and it has to continue to be random. So that's what you gotta know about all of this sample size, generating random samples using technology and even not using technology like marbles in a bag or papers, uh, slips of paper in a bag and drawing them randomly. Thanks for watching.